Hi, I'm Paula O'Brien, and I'd like to talk to you about digital painting. You can take an iPad or a tablet painting some places where you can't take a real brush. Sure, real painting with real brushes and real paint is more fun. It's true. But sometimes you're not allowed to take a sketchbook and watercolors and a water brush. It's too bad that you can't have all this fun in some locations, like in your friend's living room or in the life drawing session with carpet in the hall so you're not allowed to use wet medium. Or when it's too cold and you want to sit in your car and paint from outside. Or in a museum where you're really not allowed to have full color. Some places you're not allowed to have more than a pencil. Or in fabulous churches. That's a great time to be able to sketch with digital painting. Brushes Redux. It's made for all Apple devices. And it's been around for a long time. I started using it in 2010. Once you've seen this video, you will know more than I knew when I first used Brushes Redux for about eight years for life painting. I never used the layers. Here's a sketch done in 10 layers that took 40 minutes. Making use of transparency and line and wash. Let's open it up and see what's under the hood. When you open it up, you come to the gallery where your collected drawings are. Let's make a new one. As you can see, I'm using my fingers. You can also use an inexpensive stylus with a rubbery tip. Or you can use the Apple Pencil because it's made to go with Apple devices. Let's make a new canvas. Let's see how the different size canvases look with the different size brushes. Here's a little canvas, 320 by 480. Let's create that. So let's just pick a color, let's just pick black, let's pick a brush, let's pick this one, and let's just, whoa, it's pretty big. That's it straight out of the box, and it's 127 pixels wide, and this one is 50 pixels. That's what those brushes look like on this screen, which is quite small. So let's add that to photos, let's make a new one. That's a different size. See how small that is? 320 by 480. Let's make this one an iPhone 6 Plus. It's much bigger. So, using the same brushes, so making the same mark, this one. See how much space there is left on that screen. So, let's just export that. Let's make a new one. This is quite large. Let's just change the format. Let's open that. And again, 127 brush here on top, and the 50 pixels one here. So let's export that to add photos, and let's go to photos and see what those look like. Here they are on my camera roll. First one we made, you can see how big that brush is, filling up this small screen. So bear in mind the pixel size of your canvas. You'll have to adjust the size of your marks, but it makes a higher resolution image. These are the same mark making tools across three different size canvases. You can pick a different size canvas that's perhaps here already, or you can make a new one by just creating the size you want. Let's create a canvas that's about the size of my screen. That's about the size of my screen. Let's create that. See, it just fills the screen beautifully. Let's just move this, squeeze it in to get away from the controls so we can see it better. Here's where you work with layers. You can work with up to 10 layers in brushes and you can make them hide with the closing the eye and reappear. Let's work on the base layer. Go down here and pick a color. So here's your color wheel. Here's your last chosen color and here's going to be your next color. Let's go with that. And here's the opacity. Fully opaque, semi-transparent, very transparent to a tiny tint. Let's pick something like that. I'm in the painting side or I'm in the erasing side. Let's go on the painting side. Here's my brushes. Let's pick a textured brush like this. Oh, it's very small. Let's just step backwards. Let's make the size bigger.
And if we go back in here and maybe make it more transparent, a slightly different tint. I'm creating a nice textured paper. Now let's go into our layers. Let's go into the next layer and make it an orange. Something like you might want to um, undercoat a painting with. Something like this. Now I'm on this next layer. I'm in this layer, layer two. Let's just close this one for a minute. Close the eye on this. We're not seeing layer. On this layer two, I go into settings, fill the layer. Then it fills it with the orange. Now if I turn my layers on again, if I put this orange layer underneath that gray layer, I get this interesting base. This might be perfect. I might want to do a few paintings on something like this so I can duplicate this. I might want to make a few. And if I really like that, keep it in the, in the vault for later. Now I've made a few pages that start out with exactly the same base. Swipe here to paint. So let's just take it away from the controls again so we can see it more easily. Let's make a new layer and fill it with black, just so we can see how the eraser works. So I'm in this third layer. I'm going to pick black. In the settings, I'm going to fill the layer. It's in my layers, I can see I'm on the top layer. On this top layer, instead of using the brush with, say, a white, that's this color, let's use the eraser and erase through. See, I'm erasing through, exposing the layer below, which is that orange layer. So instead of applying white with the brush, I am removing the black and exposing the layer below. Let's try a different brush. Different kind of a line. Let's make that bigger. And if we make it semi-opaque, it's see how subtle it is. I've switched a brush. I've switched a brush in from eraser. Just step back. Go into the eraser. There. See, I'm erasing through the black to expose the amber color below. So that's the difference between applying a color and exposing through. If I like this brush, I can adjust it. I can duplicate it, and I'm editing it to have these different qualities to it. Let's, let's try this one. And the brittle intensity. So try to play around with it. Let's try that. It's quite interesting. It has a kind of scratchiness to it. If we zoom in, we see What's happening with this line? It has a center core and it has these sort of scratchy confetti edges. It's quite interesting. Now, if we took the eraser and went through that, we're getting lots of interesting textures. We can come back, come back a step, undo, redo it, switch the brush to something else. Something else that's say quite different. Let's pick these little circles. And I'm still in the eraser. Let's make this bigger. That's pretty subtle. But it is erasing. That's where you can really play with a lot of tonality. So that's a little example of how to use layers, how to use brushes, and how to use the eraser in Brushes Redux. Remember when you're ready to export your image, you might want to add a, a final layer, for example, with your signature. Keeping it on a separate layer is a really good idea. So in this layer five, let's take some kind of a subtle color. And in the brushing drawing section, this brush. And maybe make it this size and zoom into the corner. You might want to sign your work. Now you're ready to export it. You save it to your photos. Unfortunately, Brushes Redux no longer is able to export the movies it creates, the playback movies, but they are available here in the gallery. So you can see your whole process. And you could screen capture this in some other medium. 
but in, in some past update, they did edit out the playback feature. It's available here, but it's not available currently to export, whereas Adobe Photoshop Sketch and Procreate both export their playback videos, which is a fantastic feature. Let's make another layer and another layer. Let's go into the second layer and put some colors on top of this paper. I'm just going to take that away from the controls so we can see it better. Let's pick a black. And let's pick in the brushes something like a nice line. That's a nice brush to just experiment with. Now if you pick the transparency, you'll see what happens when it becomes more transparent. Or the opacity, fully opaque. Let's put something on a different layer. Let's make another layer in between these two instead. So if I pick this layer and make another one on top, here's one that's going to be underneath this but on top of this. So let's pick this layer and go in and pick a color and a brush and a size. And see, so this layer is in between, it's underneath the black layer. Let's pick a different color. Let's pick a different brush. This is one that I made just the other day. It's kind of scattered. So there you can see what's happening here with the different brushes and textures. Now if we move these layers around, if I put, grab the control and just move it down, you see it's below the green now. Using this layer, let's go into the settings here and you can desaturate, would take, which would take all the color out of it, or you can play with the hue and saturation. Accept, or you can invert the color, which reverts it to the other side of the color spectrum, or you can transform it. So by transforming it, you can size it and even stretch it and place it someplace else. Accept. The great thing about layers is you keep building in and out of them. You have to imagine that you're actually working on some something that's <laughs> worth drawing, which I'm not really right now, but I'm just showing what you could be doing. And you can zoom in with in more detail and, you know, put some details in and say this is an eye. And then you might want some shading. And you might want that underneath the eye. Let's go back, or that eye is on this layer. So if I go to this layer and make a new one in between, I can put some shading around this eye. Now in this layer, let's work with the eraser. So I'm erasing through that peach colored layer to the green layer that's below. Let's open that up. If I'm in this layer, and I erase, I'll be erasing through to the black layer. So if I wanted to hide this layer, I would just hide that and maybe go into this layer and use the eraser and expose the layers below. Hide the layer, show the layer. Eventually you build up lots of layers and you want to export your image. Here's a good example of the different marks that different things will make. Here's an Apple Pencil, here's a simple stylus, and here's my finger. Different styluses make different size marks. So using the Apple Stylus, let's go in and make a, make a little signature here for March 18th, 2019, and your signature. Thanks for watching, I'm Paula O'Brien.